In the thick forest outside the city stands a grand mansion. On November 13th, 1967, a lone man stood in front of the mansion gate. It was George Trevor, a famous architect from New York who had designed this mansion and ultimately had built it. As thanks for having completed the construction, the millionaire Oswald E. Spencer sent him a written invitation telling him to bring his family and come visit the mansion. Trevor told his wife, Jessica, and his daughter, who was about to turn 14, Lisa, to go ahead of him and he would meet them there after work. But when he arrived at the mansion, he couldn't see his wife or daughter anywhere. Trevor headed for the house and entered, and he too would never get out of there to see the light of day again. To where did George and his family disappear? This here is a sole copy of his notes. These are the things Trevor wrote down during his time at the mansion. Trevor had been offered an unbelievable sum of money from Oswald to design and build this house, this mansion, and it took him a total of five years until it was completed. Why did it take so long? Could he possibly have known of the strange incidents that would have happened at this mansion 30 years later? The key to solving these mysteries are somewhere in his notes. And this is how it all began. He had returned to the mansion once again. November 13th, 1967. I finished up my work, left New York, and arrived right at the mansion at 6 p.m. this evening. The spacious main entrance hall, the two rounded stairs in the center of the hall, leading to the second floor. Ah, how I miss this. I'm very proud of having designed this mansion. It's taken me five years to finish this house according to the model Oswald e. Spencer showed me in his office when he wished to hire me for this job. To make sure that Sir Spencer would be satisfied with my carrying out of this request, I poured out all my ability into making this mansion. But no one will ever understand it just from seeing from the outside. I saw Sir Spencer with his bleached hair heading down the stairs to meet me. He looked as self-confident as ever. I asked him where Jessica and Lisa were. Aunt Emma suddenly fell ill. They've gone off to check on her, he said. And it ended up being just the two of us raising a toast to the mansion. Spencer and I were the only ones who knew the secret of this mansion. And in the joy over this, we, we both raised our glasses to one another. The big dining hall was downstairs, and lined up on the large mahogany table were many wonderful dishes. If you looked up while in the dining hall, you could see through the gallery in the statue of the goddess Robin, who seemed to be eyeing the buffet in envy. But even so, with only me and him in this huge dining hall, it felt very lonely. Aside from the ticking of the clock by the wall, it was completely quiet. If only Jessica and Lisa had been here. From what he told me, the others had arrived three days before I did, and they had their fair share of fun in the house. Especially Lisa, who he had let use the house piano as much as she liked. Apparently the song she had played was Beethoven's Moonlight. And the beauty of the melody, he said. He left the full moon looming over the forest with a long face. He said that it had been wonderful, and he even clapped his hands while praising her. I thought of how triumphant she must have felt and how she must have been smiling. I was hoping that Jessica and Lisa would return in two or three days, because I am feeling rather lonely here without them. Oh well, with so many delicious foods and wines, all of these works of art, I should be able to stay distracted for a while. November 14th, 1967. Sir Spencer gave me a tour of the house today. He opened the door, and in front of me was a corridor with many doors to other rooms. I just stood there and gaped in amazement over the splendor and extravagance. Da Vinci paintings, Raphael statues. In one of the rooms stood stuffed beasts, their eyes having an eerie glow into them. In another stood an airy of medieval knight armors. 
lined up as if though they were ready to go to battle. Everything he showed me that day were parts of his collection. It was as expected from a world-famous millionaire. Isn't it wonderful? I was intending to make this mansion a vacation resort for my newly founded business, but not only for many company employees. I was also thinking of letting outside people stay here. From what he told me, it seemed that he was going to launch a pharmaceutical corporation on an international scale in the near future. It seemed that he had decided on the name Umbrella for his new corporation, but if he was planning to make this place a resort for his company, then why was all the secrecy about this house necessary? You'd almost think that it was a bit too extravagant, even for him. November 18th, 1967. My wife and daughter are still not back. Is Aunt Emma's condition really that bad? It's inconvenient that no phone lines have been installed yet. I went to the second floor of Uganda to take my mind off of things, and I spotted a number of crows sitting on the handrail. When they saw me, they all cried out in a quite ominous way. I had a bad feeling about all this. That reminds me, a few days ago, I just couldn't shake the feeling off that someone was watching my every step. I also saw something strange in the courtyard. I knew of the artificial waterfall, but behind the water curtain, I caught a glimpse of a staircase leading to a basement of some sort. This was not in my original design for this place. When did they manage to... But I couldn't finish that thought before three men in white robes suddenly showed up. And who might you be? Please, don't loiter around here and annoy us, said one of them, as if to scold me. And then they escorted me away from there. The white robes they wore, they had a slight odor of disinfectant. Who on earth were these people? November 20th, 1967. My lighter is gone. I got it for my wife on my birthday, and it was very precious to me. I'm sure that I left it behind in the room with the hunting rifle. No doubt about it. Did someone pick it up and take it with them? Are my wife and daughter coming back soon? The anxiety is killing me over here. Spencer just laughed when I expressed my concerns, so I told him that I couldn't bear it and I had to leave this place. Meet up with him tomorrow. November 21st, 1967. I packed my things and said farewell to Spencer, who followed me down to the first floor and went into one of the rooms. After he had left, I saw a man in a white robe looking at a painting. It was one of the three men that I had seen in the courtyard. Life is long, but still is short. He said while looking at the row of paintings which portrayed a man from when he was born to when he died of old age. Right about now, your family is, the man said. Then he smirked and laughed. Right about now? What was he talking about? Suddenly, I felt something hot in the back of my head, and I lost consciousness. November 24th, 1967. Why did it end up like this? I've been locked in this room for three days now. Pity for you, but it's a matter of security, said the man in the white robe, who came to me with a crude meal. I see. So that's what it was. The only two people who know the secrets of this house are me and Spencer. If I were to die, then he would be the only person who knew. So that's why. But for what purpose? No, no point in thinking about it. I must try to escape. Oh, what a disgrace. To get caught in the trap you set up yourself. I put all my energy into this house. I designed it so that once you entered, there would be no escape. Spencer most likely would use me to make sure of that. Suddenly, I could feel things dropping down on my body from the ceiling. Spiders! A seemingly endless supply of spiders were crawling all over the floor. I unintentionally took a step back and crushed several of them under my foot. November 27th, 1967. I somehow succeeded to escape from that room, but believe me, it's not easy getting out of this mansion. I have to keep track of every trap and mechanism, or else... The One-Eyed Tiger. The Golden Emblem. 
I need to concentrate and try to remember what it was all about. November 28th, 1967. What the hell's going on here? I saw one room where there was some sort of gigantic plant that had stretched all over the room. I'd never seen such a plant before. November 30th, 1967. I can't get out of here. No matter what I do, I can't get out of here. I saw bottles of formaldehyde lined up in a ghastly laboratory, a cave, and then... I finally found something. There in a corridor, I saw something I remembered. A high-heeled shoe. It's Jessica's. Had my wife and daughter met the same fate as I was about to? No, 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 no. I'm sure they're still alive. December 5th, 1967. I'm so thirsty. I've gone without food or drinks for several days now. My mind, nothing, nothing makes sense anymore. But why? Why do I have to die like this? Am I the one to blame for the wickedness of the man who had me design this house? December 7th, 1967. It's so dark. I'm stuck in a damp and humid underground tunnel. Is this also a dead end? No. There's something here. Shivering. I lit the final match I had with me. A tombstone. Ah. <laughs> How did it end up like this? And there's a name on it too. George... Trevor. <laughs> he had calculated from the very beginning that I would end up here, didn't he? He prepared a tombstone for me. <laughs> I'd been going in a perfect circle around this place. It's no use anymore. I could feel my senses slipping away. Jessica. Lisa. Please, forgive me. That won't be long now. Soon I too shall be headed to the paradise where you are.